flu season is upon us and COVID-19 hasn't quite left us yet. Many people who become ill may be unsure whether they have the flu or COVID-19. What are the different symptoms and how do they each spread? Joining us now to address all of your concerns is Dr. Margaret Aldrich of Montefiore Medical Center. Dr. Aldrich, thank you so much for making the time to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me and um, I'm glad to speak with the audience. Of course. A very important topic this season, right? The flu season is upon us. Doctor, can we discuss this year's flu season during coronavirus and how are doctors preparing differently this year? So I think at this point in the flu season, we're still a little bit on the early side. Uh, flu season can go from October all the way to April, really. Um, so we are really focused right now on prevention. That's, I think, Across the city, you're going to be seeing um, doctors and healthcare providers and systems really trying to get people out there and get their vaccine. Because as everyone knows, we do not have a COVID vaccine yet, but we do have a flu vaccine. So that's a really, um, a really good way for people to take control of their health and their, their children's health and to, to really focus on the prevention side of it right now. Right. And doctor, what are the main differences and symptoms between the flu and COVID-19? So a great question, because as I'm sure a lot of your viewers know, there are some overlapping symptoms between flu and COVID. Um, you know, you get the body aches, you get the fever, you can have sore throat and cough. Um, the difference really is that COVID is kind of, has all these other crazy signs and symptoms that don't usually go with flu. So, you know, anything from losing your sense of smell and taste to uh, blood clots to strange um, rashes on your fingers or toes. These are things that we really don't see with influenza, but we do see with COVID. Um, and that's one of the major differentiating factors is just those weirder signs and symptoms that are more suggestive of COVID as opposed to flu. Right. And how about the spread, doctor? How do they spread differently, the flu and COVID-19? Right, so a lot of your viewers might have been hearing about this um, in the news lately. People have been talking about airborne transmission um, versus droplet transmission. Um, so in my line of work, we do a lot of education for healthcare providers and for the public to try to understand what's the difference between these. So something like um, the flu can really be spread mostly by droplets. So that's like, you know, you're not going to be able to spread it more than six feet because you cough, you sneeze, those respiratory droplets, they come out of your mouth or your nose and they're going to fall on the ground within a few feet, okay? Airborne is you cough or sneeze and those droplets are really, really tiny and they go up into the air and they get carried farther. So you might actually expose somebody who's six, 13 feet away from you. Um, I think the take home message here is really to remember the way to prevent these viruses from spreading, both influenza and COVID, is wash your hands, wear your mask, stay six feet from other people, especially if you can't wear a mask. Thank you, I love the design. And stay home if you're sick. That's really important. It used to be people would be like, I've got a little fever. I'm going to push through, take some Tylenol. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to send my kid to school. Can't do that this year. Please, please, please do not do that because we don't know if that's COVID. We don't know if it's flu. And it really could be deadly to another person. Absolutely. Thank you, doctor, for the pointers and the reminder also to wear our masks during this season. Um, is it possible to have both COVID-19 and the flu at the same time? So there have been reports of, of people getting, um, you know, uh, potentially having co-infection. We do not have any documented co-infection, COVID and influenza um, as of now, uh, but we do worry that that is a possibility. Um, and we worry particularly for people who might be medically um, fragile. So elderly, very young children, people with diabetes, people with sickle cell disease, people who have cancer, who might not have a, an immune system that is really able to fight off both infections, and potentially they could be exposed to both and have a co-infection. COVID's bad enough, but COVID and flu 
together, we really worry that those people are going to become extremely ill. We think it's going to be rare, and we really hope that everyone in the Bronx gets their flu vaccine, which means it'll be really rare in our community. But we do worry that it's possible to have a co-infection with both SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID, and influenza. Let's discuss the benefits of the flu vaccine, doctor. You just brought it up and why the flu shot is more important than ever this year. Just an emphasis on getting this vaccine this year. Yeah. So luckily, we have a few things that we can use to prevent and to treat influenza. So the vaccine, pretty much every year, vaccine is available and it's tested millions of people around the world have gotten this vaccine before it ever even comes to New York City. So people in Australia, South Africa, Chile, all around the world have probably already gotten this vaccine. So we have the benefit of safety. We know this is safe because so many people have already gotten this vaccine this year and in years past. It's got years and years of, of testing to show that this is actually very safe. Now, the other thing is with flu, we can also give a medicine if you get the flu and treat it. This is different from COVID. And so what we're really asking is people to realize that you can take control of your health by getting your vaccine. That is a way that you are going to be able to protect yourself, your children, the older people in your community, the people who might have medical conditions. It's essentially, I think of it as your service to your community is to get your vaccine. That way you cut the spread of influenza in the community. This is more important this year than maybe any other year in the past decade because we have another respiratory virus, COVID, circulating still in our community. And that is not preventable at this time. We don't have a vaccine for it. And we really rely on people doing things like masking, hand hygiene, keeping distant from others. And that is, you know, that's the only thing we have for COVID. Flu, we actually have this vaccine. And we worry a little bit about people using the healthcare system, you know, when we need, we need our healthcare system to be available for COVID patients with influenza. It's something that we can actually prevent. Yes, absolutely. Um, doctor, let's say we have a viewer tuning in who says or thinks that getting the flu shot actually gives them the flu. Is this a myth? And should people be concerned about a weakened immune system from this shot during this season? This is a great question. So I actually get this every year from my patients. I have many patients who tell me, Doc, I don't get the flu shot because it gives me the flu. And what I can say is, I hear you. Because it's certainly true that some people, when they get the vaccine, they do feel a little sore. They might feel a little bit like they have a little achiness um, in a day or two after their vaccine. Uh, they might even run a low fever, you know, 100, 100 100.1, something like that, um, and feel a little bit like, wow, I feel flu-like. The thing is that that is actually your body's immune system responding to the vaccine and building itself up so that when you do get, the, get exposed to the actual flu virus, your body is ready and it knows how to fight that. Um, that is different than actually having the infection. The vaccine that most people get is the injection. And that vaccine does not have any actual virus in it. It's not, you're not actually getting a shot of infection. It is modified so it tricks your body into thinking that you had the flu and it prepares your body so that when you are exposed to the actual infection, your body really knows how to fight it. So yes, you might feel a little bit off for a day or two. You did not get the flu. Some people do get vaccinated and a week or two goes by and they actually get the flu because their body hasn't had enough time. It takes about two weeks for your body to build up its immunity once you get the vaccine. So it is possible you get the vaccine on Monday and then you're at work on Friday and your friend has the flu and you get the flu. It's not that the vaccine didn't work. It's that your body didn't have enough time yet to build up its immune system against that exposure. 
Got it. Thank you, doctor, for clearing that up and helping us understand that during this scary season in our in our life. Um, before we go, how can people, where and how can people get a flu shot safely this season? This is um, really important information to share. So many people probably realize their local pharmacies often have the vaccine. Um, that's a great way, easy way to do. You could do walk-in. Um, a Montefiore Medical Center has um, some mobile uh, sort of flu clinics that are, are run in various parts of the Bronx. And I think we can share that information with your viewers. Um, in addition to your own primary care, if you have a primary care provider, a pediatrician for your children, or your own primary care provider, um, really all clinics in New York will be stocked with influenza vaccine. There's a real big push from our health department also to make sure that people all over the city have access, um, including I think some um, Department of Health clinics that might be offering influenza vaccine for free. Thank you, Dr. Margaret Alridge from Montefiore Health Center for joining us today. Thank you. Again, folks, you heard it, Bronx. Continue to protect yourself from the coronavirus and the flu this season by wearing your mask and going out to get the flu shot. We'll be right back.